Nice thing about having a Jupyter Lab is it enables kind of compatibility with multiple developers working on it. So from this interface, you can now submit graph analytics job, graph ML jobs, and then query your, your data in natural language. The whole motivation for having Jupyter Notebooks as the interface is to keep that familiarity that data scientists have. We have our nodes in green, which represent a particular website. The products being sold on those websites are in red and the, uh, the nodes in yellow represent the person selling that product. Just to give you an example of what the data actually looks like in OrangoDB, um, you can see here that you've got fields such as the price of a product, the name of the seller, the website, and the particular tag that this product has been labeled as. In this case, this product has been labeled as counterfeit. We can see that indeed, it looks like a knockoff watch. I think that looks like a Lexus logo. OrangoDB's GraphML product is formerly called Orango GraphML, and we're, we've boiled this product down to five major steps, and the end result being you have a trained ML model that you can now repetitively apply on new data. We encourage users to experiment and kind of use some of the assistance that we provide to, to get better feature em embeddings for training. So going back to that specification concept, really this is all that there is to it to describing a featureization job. What I'm interested in showing you is this metagraphed sub-object, which is responsible for listing the vertex collections that we want to featureize, along with the fields and the individual feature type associated to each feature. After you've done your specification definition, it's just a matter of submitting a featureization job when it does finish, you're greeted with some metadata. And then finally, we can kind of observe the new fields that exist on our document. So going back to that fake watch example that we saw earlier, we can now see additional fields present on our document. Okay, cool. So we've got our embeddings. Now it's time for us to train a series of GraphML models. And so the training specification has a similar format, but is a bit smaller. We're using the output of the featureization job as the input for the training job and we're specifying the specific ML task we wanna do. So, same thing, you're using the client library to trigger a training job, and this will give you an output with basically confirmation that, that now can tell you, okay, I've got my models, now it's time to select one of them. We don't just train one model, we train 12 in total, and so from those 12 models, you get to pick uh, which one you wanna use, based on a set of criteria. So just using a, a simple function here to say, fetch me the best model based on the test accuracy score. And then it's just gonna, you know, filter over the, the models and say, okay, well, here is one particular model. Uh, the validation accuracy is at 80%, but if we scroll down to the second object past the conf confusion matrix, we can see that the test accuracy also stands at 80. And I mean, for a first pass, 80% is generally, generally speaking, a good model accuracy for kind of a first attempt on the data set. And so mind you, this is a POC that can be accomplished within a couple of days. From that stage, it's really, really simple. The confusion matrix is another thing you can visualize should you be interested in. It's a nice way to get a visualization of the distribution of your labels and how well your model did. And so we're gonna use a the model that we've selected. We're gonna submit a prediction job and we're gonna basically run the prediction job for the data that exists in our data set. Now, in this particular case, um, we did a prediction job for the entire data set. But if you were to get, let's say, um, new data that comes in, and let's assume that that data is unfeaturized, you could, for example, set this field to basically say, okay, well, I've got new data coming in, uh, it's unfeaturized. I want the prediction job to also take the responsibility of featurizing those new documents. Following this, we trigger our featureization, or I'm sorry, our prediction job. We get some new fields embedded on the documents. Uh, in this particular case, we decided to call this field predicted underscore condensed tag. So we now have four new fields, which can represent the string representation of the predicted label, the numerical representation, and then additional uh, confidence scores associated to each of the labels. So for example, if we take a look at this document here, uh, this has been a document that, let's say, gets inserted into OrangoDB after training your model. It looks like a knockoff uh, key fob for a car. It has been labeled as predicted, uh, as, as, as counterfeit. And so it also has the embeddings, embeddings inserted after having triggered the prediction job. So now we can then move on to the next step, which is let's use natural language to fetch some of these results.